everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Monica. <clears throat> Good morning. So I believe we are live. It is 9 a.m. and I will call the meeting to order. My name is Barbara Debrin and I am the chairperson of the Committee of Adjustment. I would like to welcome everyone online. The committee members include members of council. However, we sit at this table as the Committee of Adjustment and not as members of council. Our jurisdiction lies solely with matters of consents and minor variance applications. The secretary of this committee is Alicia Milne. This is a hearing to consider applications for minor variances and consents within the township of Southgate and is held under the provisions of the Planning Act 1990. This hearing will be in accordance with the Provincial Planning Act, the Municipal Act and the Township of Southgate official plan. May I have confirmation of the agenda, a mover and seconder? Joan and Brian, it was resolved that the committee confirm the agenda as discussion. Any opposed? That is carried. Declaration of pecuniary interest. Hearing or seeing none, I will remind the committee that they may declare any pecuniary interest or conflict of interest at any time should something arise during the meeting. Hello. Be it resolved that the com Hello? Welcome. It's Martin. It's Martin here, Barb. I, I've got messed up today, but here I am anyway. So I don't have any pecuniary interest. Thank you, Martin. Thank Martin you. Shipston has joined the line. I'm not sure if you're able, you can... I don't know if someone can change the telephone number to his name, but we will we will recognize you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, perfect. There we go. So, Martin, without your camera on, if you should wish to speak, please uh, um, let us know. Okay. Thank you. Yep, for sure. Uh, may I get a mover and a seconder, be it resolved, the committee approved the minutes from the September 27th, 2023 meeting as presented. Monica and Joan, any errors or omissions? Any opposed? That is carried. I will ask that anyone speaking about an application to state their full name and address for the record. Please keep all remarks relevant to the consent or minor variance application before us as the Committee of Adjustment has no jurisdiction on any other matters. Any materials submitted to the Committee for viewing will remain the property of the Committee of Adjustment and will be available for public viewing in the application file and may be placed online. Please direct all remarks and questions to the chairperson of the committee. Now, this will enable the hearing. The task code? This will um, this will enable the hearing to be conducted in an organized manner. Our first file is B1023, Christopher Van Vlyman. The purpose is to sever farmland with 330.9 meters of frontage on Highway 6 plus or minus 972 meters of depth and plus or minus 38.42 hectares from the existing farmhouse and accessory buildings. The retained lot containing the farmhouse and accessory buildings would have plus or minus 68 meters of frontage on Highway 6, plus or min minus 95 meters of depth, 0.776 hectares of area and will be irregular in shape. The effect would be to create a severed lot to be conveyed to the adjacent owner to the north and the retained lot would become a surplus farm dwelling which would be rezoned to identify exceptions to the reduced lot requirements in the agricultural one zone. Location of the subject land is concession one, Egremont PT, DIV three, lot eight, part DIV one, Lot 9, Geographic Township of Egremont, Township of Southgate, also known as 312-621 Highway 6. Is there a request for deferral or withdrawal of this application? <coughs> there have been none received. Thank you, Alicia. Seeing none, we can proceed. May I please have clarification that the sign was posted? 
Yes, the sign was posted and notice was mailed out in accordance with the Planning Act. Thank you. I will now ask our planning consultant, Bill White, to review all comments received and present his staff report. Welcome, Bill. And you were muted. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, the staff are recommending uh, approval of this application. Uh, it was, uh, as Alicia mentioned, circulated according to the Planning Act requirements. Um, I guess probably best for me to quickly go through the comments that have been received. Yes, please. Um, and so I'm just going to those. Enbridge Gas has commented on the application and uh, they do, do not have service lines in the area. Um, so interested in it, they commented twice, I guess, and they had no objections. Uh, uh, the historic Sogging Métis had no objection. Hydro One, uh, they don't appear to have any uh, right. objections. They're mentioning that they are the supplier for the area. The Sogging Valley Conservation Authority has reviewed the application and uh, and the zoning amendment, and they are both acceptable to the to the authority, and they've outlined their reasons for that. Uh, Public Works has uh, indicated that. Uh, this has uh, an MTO jurisdiction highway, obviously, and they've checked the box that pertains to road widening, as I recall. Oh, no, no road widening on this one. Uh, so it's an MTO jurisdiction road. The County of Gray has dealt with this application as a surplus farm severance. And... Uh, they're not objecting to it being approved uh, under those conditions. And the MTO comments at this time, and they've been evolving over the week, but uh, initially I think we were hearing that they would not be granting an entrance to this severed lot, but that may have changed. Um, I don't think they have any opposition to the um, joining of the parcel to the uh, lands to the to the north, but uh, uh, they are the uh, jurisdiction as far as access, and so any conditions placed on this should require the entrance approval to MTO satisfaction. In terms of uh, the planning report, as I mentioned, we don't uh, have any objections to the proposal. Uh, the intent of the application is to create this lot and uh, off the subject lands and convey it to uh, Alvin and Victoria Terpsta, who are to the north. Uh, when our staff contacted them, their initial feeling, I believe, was that they wanted that lot to remain separate, in which case, if it is to be separate, it needs to be rezoned. Oh, you can start there. Ah, oh, here we are. <laughs> Welcome. Um, yes, thank you. Go ahead, Bill. Sorry. Uh, so when we contacted them, they uh, felt like they wanted to keep that lot separate, in which case it would be a surplus farm severance, and that entire lot would be rezoned to prohibit a new dwelling from being constructed. The issue, if it remains separate, is that it would need access to the highway, um, we're not entirely sure yet whether they would be granted access. I know they've had some discussions with the MTO. Uh, staff have, have presented this as an either or. Uh, if the other alternative is that the severed lot be joined to their existing farm, and then it would be gaining access through their existing driveway to the north. Uh, either way, I think staff are 
uh, have no objections to this application and would recommend approval. Um, standard conditions would apply regarding access and uh, rezoning of the either the severed parcel to prohibit it from having uh, future dwelling being built on it and the retained parcel to deal with site and building regulations that may not be in compliance for a smaller lot. So those are the standard conditions that we're recommending and nothing in the conditions that I see would prohibit it from being considered favorably. favorably. Um, the major issue would be the MTO access. And I'd happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Bill. The, were there any comments from the public? We don't see any on the agenda, but they sometimes come in later. Chair, I, I, Chair Debreen. Yes, go ahead. I Alicia. can confirm that there were none received from members of the public. Okay. All right. Is it your wish that we continue, or is that also your staff report, Bill? Other than the comments you've reviewed, what you feel is necessary, we can open it up for questions. I have nothing further to add unless there are questions. Okay, uh, thank you. Supporting. Yep. Is the applicant in attendance? And if so, would they care to come forward to present their case? I don't hear anyone. Good morning, Do any sorry, other... Madam Chair. Oh, good For morning. Victoria. <laughs> good morning. Victoria. Hi, yeah. Victoria. This is my husband, Elvin. Hi, Elvin. Welcome. So as Bill stated, I think there was a, a little bit of a misunderstanding on MTO's part. Maybe, maybe it was the wording or conveyed or amalgamated. Um, they assumed or they took it as amalgamating and we would like to keep the, uh, we would like to keep it a separate property. And so, uh, and so that, that was the uh, concern over this past week on our part. So my understanding from the planner and from yourself is that you're still working through the details from MTO and if, a entrance can be granted. You would prefer to keep the lot separate, the agricultural farm parcel separate. If MTO does not grant an entrance, the requirement would be to merge it with your farm. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Are there any others in attendance? Uh, sorry, are there any members of the committee have any questions at this time? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Martin here, Barb. Go ahead, Martin. And uh, just before I, you go, Martin, I just want to acknowledge yeah. that Jim Ferguson did join us. So welcome, Jim, to the committee today. Go ahead, Martin. Oh, okay. Good morning, Jim. Yeah, I have no problem with this. Uh, you know, it looks like it's all fairly straightforward. But procedurally, can we can we accept or decline decline it today because MTO has not made a decision like that's the only thing that I'm wondering about can we actually move forward with this if, if they don't rubber stamp what they want like the idea is good I have no problem with the application and zoning amendment but can can we move forward still I guess that's a, a question for the planner I guess thank you Martin that's I'm going to go to Bill thank you I, I would say it's if the committee sees the application favorably that they could put the condition in on the either or option of the severance. And that way, Alicia will, would not be able to issue the final approval until MTO uh, issues their consent. So <clears throat> as long as you cover MTO uh, issues through a condition, you can proceed, in my opinion. Thank okay. you, Bill. And uh, my... my Go ahead, Martin. No, I just said thank you for that. That's the only hinge pin I had. Like, you know how MTO can be. I wouldn't want to hold anything up to the applicants, but if, if we okay. can do that, that would be fine, yeah. So my understanding is, is that the resolution has four clauses. The first two is one option, or the second two are the alternative option, 
and both are, it would hinge and we would be providing flexibility to Alicia, depending on the outcome of the MTO comments. Is that, that is what we are voting on. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions from members of the committee? I see no hands. Are there any others in attendance that would like to speak in support of this application? Are there any others in attendance that would like to speak in opposition of this application? Are there any questions or comments from the committee? All right. Hearing none, we can move on to the resolution. I will read it. Uh, I will ask the committee members uh, if there's a requirement. I've already done that. Um, so it is, be it resolved that the Committee of Adjustment receives staff report PL 2023-051 for information and that the application for consent be approved subject to the following conditions. I'm wondering, Alicia, is it possible to share the resolution on the screen for those participating as I read it? Yeah, I will share that. Thank you. That the severed lot be conveyed to the abutting owner to the north, the agent, and the sec that section 493 of the Planning Act RSO 1990 CP 13 apply to subsequent conveyances of the same parcel and that zoning of the retained lot be amended to comply any, to and address any deficiencies created as a result of the conveyance of the farm parcel to the abutting owner to the north, or that the severed lot be rezoned to prohibit construction of any residential dwelling on the said lot and the zoning be retained, Rezoning of the retained lot address any deficiencies created as a result of the conveyance of the farm parcel and that the standard conditions regarding parkland dedication, driveway access and similar apply as recommended by other agencies and township departments, including that all requirements of the township financial or otherwise be addressed to the satisfaction of the township prior to issuance of a certificate of consent. Um, the before I get, um, I'll get a mover and, um, sorry, before I ask for a granting um, refusal or deferral, could you clarify that the surplus farm dwelling would be rezoned as residential? Because I it, believe it says in your report, agricultural one zoning. And there is no mention in this resolution about MTO. I'm, I'm assuming that that's just one of the conditions that is within the agency comments. Right. Go ahead, Bill. If I, if I may, thank you. Uh, the, uh, uh, the zoning of the retained parcel, I guess it could be written, however, is the normal practice of the, of the township. I guess, uh, it could be an A1 exception or a residential zoning for a smaller lot. Either way, we'll write it accordingly. Um, so I think the condition's probably worded all right, If uh, unless somebody's got some concerns. Nope, just it's, it's something new for us. It's uh, a different direction. So we're just working through that. Thank you very much. All right, I need a mover and seconder to grant, refuse, or defer the application. Brian? I'll move that we grant the second option, that the severed lot be rezoned to prohibit construction. Da, 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 da. So my understand, thank you, Brian. Uh, my understanding is, is that we're voting to do the entire resolution to give Alicia some flexibility with regard to the MTO, because if we grant one it and they can't get an entrance. Sure. What she said. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, that is my oh, understanding. I just want to. 
Thank you, Martin. Martin will second. Yeah, I'll second. What she said. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the decision, uh, so I will, um, Alicia, the script indicates I should read it again. I don't feel like that's necessary. Okay. <laughs> Unless okay. anyone needs clarification. So, I think we are good. We have, I see no hands. Um, any further discussion from members of council before we call the vote? I don't see any hands. Are there any opposed to granting this application? I don't hear any. So the decision of the committee of adjustment is to grant the application with the conditions as set out in the resolution that we just discussed. The decision of the Committee of Adjustment, um, the applicant shall have two years in which the conditions must be met. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to the next file. B11-23, the trustees, let me get that up on my screen. The trustees of the Old Order Mennonite Conference and B12-23, Dale and Linda Watson. The purpose of file B1123 is to create an easement for driveway access to Southgate Road 14 across part of the subject lands issued provisional consent under file B13-22 to enlarge a cemetery. The proposed easement would be 12.75 meters wide and 21.146 meters deep. The remaining retained parcel not subject to the easement is 67.717 meters wide, excuse me, and 25.146 meters deep. The effect would be to create an easement over the west part of the property for driveway access to Southgate Road 14. The purpose of file B1223 is to create an easement for driveway access to Southgate Road 14 across part of the subject lands issued provisional consent under file B1322 to enlarge a cemetery. The proposed easement would be, it seems duplicated, but I'm going to continue to read it. The proposed easement would be 12.75 meters wide and 91.67 meters deep. The remaining retained parcel not subject to the easement has 84 0.722 meters of frontage on Southgate Road 14, plus or minus 0.76 hectares of area and is irregular in shape. The effect would be to create an easement over the west part of the property for driveway access to Southgate Road 14. Location of the subject land is concession 13, part lot 27, geographic township of Egremont in the township of Southgate. Leach, is there a request for deferral or withdrawal of the application? There have been none received. Thank you. Seeing none, we can proceed. May I please have clarification that the sign was posted? Yes, the sign was posted and notice was given in accordance with the Planning Act for both um, B1123 and B1223. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll now ask planning consultant, Bill White, to review all comments received and present his staff report. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Enbridge Gas, uh, the Sogging Métis, Hydro One, uh, have no comments or concerns. Uh, Southgate Public Works noted it's a load restricted roadway. Um, that entrance permit would be required for that at some point when the access is built if, a, if there are changes made. And I don't, the, the Sogging Valley Conservation Authority had commented on the rezoning previously and they did not raise any further concerns beyond what they had mentioned previously. As far as the staff report, uh, we dealt with this application as a, uh, you get to that one. We de dealt with B11 and B12 jointly. Um, it's uh, 
the property was originally severed back in, uh, well, it started back at the end of 2022 and was approved by the committee uh, early in, in this year. Uh, basically, a lot just under a hectare was severed from the original parcel and joined to the cemetery or to be joined to the cemetery. And I think the cover letter from loft planning very accurately describes what is going on, but the, the rezoning was also approved uh, on the severed lot and it was placed in a holding zone with a couple of conditions to remove that holding. First, that a site plan agreement be uh, signed with the township and second, that an archeological analysis be completed. Uh, so that it turned out that the driveway that was to be used to the coverall building at the back was too steep and they've all agreed that they would like to uh, relocate or have another driveway access. And because this is an easement or a right of way that would go beyond 21 years, Planning Act considers that to be uh, needing a severance because it's conveying an interest in land. And uh, the conditions on B1322 are still yet to be met. So the township will have to be working with the applicant solicitor legal counsel to make sure all the conveyances are done in the right order. That's kind of a technical thing that, that I don't think the committee has to worry about here because we've recommended it be covered under a condition. Uh, uh, generally, township staff are recommending the committee approve B11 and B12 with the standard conditions applying regarding the township's financial conditions and that B13 of 22 conditions also be met uh, to the satisfaction of the township. And I can answer any questions further on it. I believe you're muted, Chair Dobreen. Yes. <laughs> I remember I, I, because I was going to cough, I muted myself. Thank you. Are there any others? Sorry. Is the applicant in attendance? And if so, would they like, care to come forward to present their case? Good morning, Chair Dobreen. It's Christine Loft, and I'm acting on behalf of both the Watsons and the trustees. Um, Good morning. So a short PowerPoint presentation, although Bill's covered everything off quite well. So, um, I'm happy to present a few slides if the committee would like to see some drawings. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm also uh, uh, fine with Bill's overview as well. Thank you, Christine. What is the wish of the committee? I have a question Don't? for the chair. County mm -hmm. comments for B11 and B12. Uh, so, Joan? Just going to just going to pause for a second. If there is no need for uh, Christine Loft to share her screen and present her presentation as it was provided in the in the, or is it your wish that we just continue to the next question period? Uh, no, no, no. I thought she declined no, to good. show her slides. That's okay. We can watch the slides. I just had a question. No. Okay. Go ahead, Christine, if there's anything else that you would like to add. Okay, um, I won't sure. I, I think Bill's done, uh, done a fine job at covering it off. I will just indicate that um, we are awaiting the decisions of these easements before the solicitors finalize the initial um, severance for the Meeting House land addition. Um, and in terms of the, I know archaeology was a key factor um, in the original consent. And so um, the work has been completed on that. The second um, stage one and two has now been completed or the field work and that information has been forwarded to SON um, for direction then on stage three. So that is um, underway. And of course, the lift of hold, or the holding symbol will remain on the land. I did have a conversation with county staff um, it just uh, wondering, you know, in terms of the the hold, the holding symbol. So the holding symbol will remain on the property and is not affected by the these um, easement applications. And those are the my comments. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. So I'll now go to the committee and and Joan, you had a question. 
Thank you, Chair Dabrin. She kind of answered one of my questions, and I will wait for the archaeological report. But I was just looking at what county staff will ultimately defer to Southgate for a decision on this matter. Staff would recommend that the applicant ensure that there is sufficient lands available to achieve an adequate development footprint for the proposed meeting house, parking area, etc., outside of the easement area, including any recommend dead setbacks. So um, I, that was just a little thing that I wanted some more explanation on because I noticed that the county deferred to Southgate. Thank you. Christine, you had to thank, want to respond to that? Yes, thank you, um, Chair Dobrian, to um, Committee Member John. So I did speak with county staff about this, and I did actually forward them a very conceptual site plan that does sort of show our preliminary. That was obviously part of our initial work when we were deciding on the width of the easement was to ensure that we were still leaving room for uh, the purpose of the severed lot. So I did actually forward them a conceptual plan. Um, I asked that it not be shared because it's certainly not finalized, but it did provide um, evidence to the county that there is certainly still room on the site for um, you know, the proposed meeting house, uh, parking um, and access uh, um, to Southgate 41, so, or 14, sorry. So I did provide that that to them. Thank we have you. Follow -up. Good. Okay. Are there any other questions from the committee? Seeing none. Are there any others in attendance that would like to speak in support of this application? Are there any present that would like to speak in opposition of this application? Hearing and seeing none, I will again ask the committee members if there is a requirement for further discussion. All right, I'm just gonna to go to the resolution. <clears throat> Be it resolved that Committee of Adjustment receive staff report PL 2023-052 regarding B1123 and B1223 for information, and that the application for consent to create easements over an existing driveway be approved subject to the following conditions. That conditions related to the original consent application B13-22 be met in such a way to allow for the driveway access proposed to be created to the satisfaction of the township and that the standard conditions regarding driveway access and similar apply as recommended by other agencies and township departments, including that all requirements of the township, financial or otherwise, be addressed to the satisfaction of the township prior to issuance of a certificate of consent. And I need a mover and seconder. I'll move it, Barb. Martin. Thank you. And Joan. Are you moving to grant, refuse, or defer, oh. Martin? No, my apologies. I, my apologies. I meant, I meant yes, uh, moving it to grant. Let's get okay, it moving. And you're okay with that? Thank you. And you're okay with that, Joan? Thank you. Yes, uh, along with the conditions. Yeah, thanks. Yes. Are there is there any further discussion on the motion? Are there any opposed to, the, to granting the application? Seeing none, that is carried. The decision of the Committee of Adjustment is to grant the application with the conditions as set out in the resolution in the staff report. The applicant shall have two years in which the conditions must be met. Thank you very much, Christine and, and guests. The next file is B13-23, Joseph, Solomon, Emerson, and Rachel Bowman. The purpose is to sever the parcel into two farm lots. The severed lot would have approximately 205 meters of frontage on Highway 89 and a lot area of approximately 20 hectares. The retained parcel would have approximately 205 meters frontage on Highway 89 
and a lot area of approximately 20 hectares. The effect would be to create two farm lots within the rural designation of the Southgate official plan. Location of the subject lands is concession one lot 33 geographic township of Proton. The lands are further described as 026 453 Highway 89. Is there a request for deferral or withdrawal of the application, Alicia? There have been none received. Okay. Seeing none, we can proceed. May I have clarification that the sign was posted? Yes, the sign was posted and notice was given in accordance to the Planning Act. Great. Thank you very much. I will now ask Planning Consultant Bill White to review all comments received and present his staff report. You or, of course, our planner, Victoria Mance. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, thank you, Chairperson Debris. Uh, I'll deal with the comments uh, that had no opposition, and that would be Enbridge and Soggy and Metis. And I don't believe Hydro One had any concerns. Uh, County of Gray didn't object to the application. Uh, they've brought forward some issues related to the natural heritage woodlands and so forth that may be in or around the property. Uh, they've outlined their provisions in the county official plan regarding creating new lots in rural areas. Um, they raised an issue regarding MDS calculations and that we don't have those for this application. I believe we could cover that off with a condition. I don't think that we've picked that condition off in our recommendation to you. And the Conservation Authority also commented on the natural heritage aspects of the application and they have no objections. As far as our planning report, this is a proposal to create a new farm lot in a rural area. They're basically splitting a 40 hectare parcel into two uh, new uh, into two parcels. Both of them would have 205 meters of frontage on Highway 89. The new severed lot also has depth along Southgate Side Road 21. That road is not fully opened and is not maintained by the uh, township, but it is an access into the uh, back of the parcel. Uh, we mentioned in our report also that there are some wetland wooded areas on and around the property. There seems to be some farm drainage kind of midway through that uh, links up with properties to, I guess, would be the east and west so it's kind of a little system running through there the conservation authority in the county believe that there is a buildable area on the proposed severed lot outside of the hazard areas noted that would have to be determined and they've made recommendations on the setbacks and so forth this would need a rezoning as a condition to deal with the lot area of both the severed and retained parcel that does not technically meet the requirements in the zoning bylaw but it is an original 40 hectare parcel, so we believe it would be eligible for splitting as they proposed it, subject to the lot area being addressed. I neglected to read the MTO conditions on this. They're very specifically not granting an access to the severed lot. So the drawing that the applicant submitted showing the entrance onto Highway 89, they would not grant that, but they would want the access to come off the township road. Uh, so the driveway, according to them, would be 80, have to be 85 meters from the from the highway. Well, they call it a radius, but anyway, from the highway. If you look at the applicant's drawing, I believe the home was to be set back about 75 meters. So we would have to work it out with Public Works how that would be addressed, but it seems like access arrangements can be made acceptable to the township and to MTO by improving that uh, 
Southgate Road along the west lot line, Southgate Road 21. My suggestion would be that in the midst of conditions on that, that the responsibility for maintaining that roadway rests with the owners of the severed lot. And I think that subject to discussing that with public works, that way we don't have to bring plows or upgrade that road or anything. It would be the basically considered a, a private access drive on the township road allowance. I'm not sure whether the township has done this before or not, but my suggestion would be that you don't want to get involved with either upgrading that access or maintaining that access. So you would need an agreement with the future owner of that severed lot that they would do that. Uh, I don't think there was any other issues that need to be addressed. We're uh, recommend that you're recommending that you approve the application subject to the standard condition uh, uh, regarding access. I'm not sure if you get parkland dedications as a matter of policy off of severance in a rural area, but that would apply if, if it is the case here. That's all the comments I have at this point, unless there are any questions. Thank you, Bill. Is the applicant in attendance? And if so, would they like care to come forward to present their case? I see no other uh, participants on the call. They may have been disconnected. We will we will watch for someone to log back in. Do any of the member do members of the committee have any questions at this time? Uh, Martin here, Chair. Sure. Brian, um, sorry, Brian has his hand up, Martin. And then I'll go to you, no, okay, fine. Martin? Thank you, yep, Brian. I was <clears throat> I was just going to uh, add that yes, we have run into this in the past, and typically, uh, and I um, mean the the roads or the works department, the, they're the experts on this one, but we have run into this in the past, and typically what we do is we ask the applicant to rebuild the road to township standards for about 300 feet or 100 meters back into the property on the on the road allowance. <clears throat> we retain the road allowance property, but the resident has to maintain it. Mm -hmm. It's always a difficult thing because it's not a cheap project to build that chunk of road to our standards, but that's what we typically ask for. And of course, then you have the old intersection thing with MTO and on and on it goes. So um, very much, I, I would hope that the public works department would be made aware of this and make sure that they have some input on what needs to be done and make sure the applicant is aware of what needs to be done. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Martin? Well, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, thank you, Brian. That was one of my my uh, thoughts. I'm, I was pretty sure that we did have some kind of arrangement. And, you know, if we have the plow going down there, we'd have to do a turnaround. It would even cost more than what you suggested, Brian. So, yeah, I think that would be a condition that they know what they're getting into and they look after it. The other thing uh, that struck me, it, it's, being, it's being severed into a 20 hectares. And we've already had this come down from the official plan amendment for another 20 hectares in the township. With this hazard, and, and Bill mentioning um, there could be enough to build a house, are we, are we going to see this, do you think, coming down the pipe is another official plan amendment to put a factory there as well because so what Bill I'm going and I'm going to stop you Martin um we can't predict yeah. what the property owner has planned and 20 hectares is 100 acres you're thinking of no 20 hectares is not 100 acres 50 yeah. sorry yes yeah, sorry 50 acres which yeah. the I think you're thinking of another file that reduced it further from that yeah. Okay. Well, my main point is with the hazard lands there, hopefully there will be enough for what for what they want to do. My only Certainly. concern was the my only concern was the issue of uh, road maintenance. So, um, I guess I'm okay with it. Thank you, thank Bill. You. Would you like to respond? Right. Uh, thank you. That I should add to that. Uh, in addition to requiring the entrance off the the side road. Uh, MTO wants road uh, uh, conveyance of, I'll call it road widening to them along 
the highway. So basically that would give them ownership of the strip adjacent to the highway so that there is no entrance ever granted there. So we're dealing with, they'll be dealing with opening that roadway to a standard acceptable to public works. Um, and then as to the drawing, they do show that they're proposing in the future some kind of operation there. Uh, it would be incumbent on them to address that in their rezoning application on the lot area. So maybe that would, those details would come forward, but I'm just going based on what the cons or, or the county said, they feel like there's enough room for a, a building envelope there. And I just wanted to assure the committee that we would make sure that they would comply and that you would be seeing this as a council through the rezoning application, which is a condition of severance. Thank you. Any other members of the committee have any questions or oh, sorry, Martin, did you have a follow up? Well, no, I, I, I just wanted to thank Bill uh, for that. Uh, that was, again, one of my only real concerns. And I, and I just want to thank you for pointing out my error. I did get my hectares and rods. No, so did I. I got it wrong, too. Stuff. So yeah. I, I thank you for that. Anyway, no, I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions from other members of council? So from the chair, I'm just wondering if we need additional uh, conditions because we need to enter into an agreement. The applicant would need to enter into an agreement for the road widening, the building of the road, the um, assuming the requirement to maintain and hold harmless Southgate, should there be um, a an incident at the intersection of 89 and 21, because we still maintain, we would still be the owner of that land. I'm just wondering uh, if that should be a clause somehow written into the agreement or if it already has been captured, I don't think it has, or if it should be deferred pending that outcome and consultation with public works. I'm going to pass it over to Bill or to Alicia on how the committee should consider this file. Thank, thank you, Chairperson Debreen. I think you could do it either, either way. I, I, I would agree with you that probably it would be a good idea to be very specific if you're going to consider a condition of approval that the access arrangements be off of Southgate Side Road uh, 21 to the satisfaction of Public Works and that an agreement be entered into regarding extending the roadway to the appropriate standard and that the clause include maintenance being the responsibility of the owner and that they have to convey the one foot reserve or the ro roadway widening that is mentioned in the MTO comments. And that way you're very specific to them that it's a fairly substantial obligation on them regarding that roadway. So you could defer and have that come back as an agreement if you wish to see it beforehand. I think you could we could word the condition some way along what I said to cover the township's interests and the MTO's interests and be clear to the applicants if that's the committee's wish as well. So I'm not sure you need to defer it, but I, I would agree that the condition probably should be much more specific so the applicants are aware of their obligations pretty clearly on this one. Thank you, Bill. And from the chair, I think that we would also include a requirement of proof of insurance adequate to save harmless the township of Southgate. Um, the I'm going to go to Alicia because I think she was creating something there. The other aspect of that is um, in consultation with the Public Works Department. Um, I think a an additional clause would capture that. I'm going to go to Alicia and see what she's going to suggest. Yeah, we can certainly add in another clause 
um, capturing everything that Bill mentioned. Um, I'll give you a few seconds or minutes to create craft that or yeah yeah it it's too bad we can't take like a virtual recess <laughs> to well, get it yes. all encompassed um in there um well, we can yeah. take a virtual recess to give you some time to craft that with uh with um, bill I, I think it's it's that or we defer it and have it come back but i'm also very sensitive to the strict timelines uh that are now upon the municipality with regard to to planning files. And I will just note that the committee doesn't sit in December, so it wouldn't be brought back until the end of January. Just for your information. I'll right, know. which could create some problems with regard to prompt and timely um, applications. I'm Member, Matt, Mel gonna, has, I, I'm just sorry. about to type a, a condition to Alicia and Victoria to read through to you. So take me about a few minutes if you, if you want to take a virtual break. With the indulgence of the committee, I think it's important <clears throat> to move the file along. If there's any objection, yep. we'll just have a short recess. Sounds good. I've sent you through that email, Alicia and Victoria. So let me know if you if it makes sense to you. <laughs> I don't know whether you want to read it to the chairperson beforehand or not. Maybe it's better just to bring it into the committee as a group when you're ready. I agree. When we're when you're ready, Alicia, let us know and we'll come back from recess. 
Yeah, I think that sounds good, Bill. Okay. Need some elevator music for recesses. Perhaps Jim would favor us with a tune. <laughs> I think we can proceed if everyone is back and, and ready. So I will welcome the committee back. Darn, Jim was just winding up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ryan, I, uh, before I go to the resolution, you had your hand up for a bit, and I'm not sure if we captured. Well, I, would, <clears throat> I was just going to uh, suggest a wording for the, for the uh, additional comment or the additional condition, but um, more learned people, far more learned people than me have done that. So I don't need to do that. The only other comment I was going to make was, um, at, uh, and uh, perhaps I'll wait to see what the conditions is, uh, Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I agree. Uh, we'll see what's up there and we'll uh, we'll have more opportunity to comment. Alicia, would you like to share your screen to see what, uh, what magic you have created? Yes, I'll share my screen now. Sorry, it's just so we have the First and second clause are as they were before, and we would add and, and a third clause that access arrangements be made acceptable to the township and the MTO that provides for opening Southgate Side Road 21 to an appropriate standard with maintenance responsibilities and liability resting with the applicant, saving the township harmless, and that the agreement for access include dedication of any roadway widening and reserves that may be needed to the satisfaction of the township and MTO. Thank you. I will now go to the committee and just see if that captured our discussion. If there's any questions from the committee? Brian? Just, just a suggestion, well, not a suggestion, but a comment. I'm not sure, um, but it is appropriate or fair to ask the applicant to rebuild the road to our standards and then have them maintain it and support the liability. Um, but <clears throat> that said, I'll uh, leave that to the, uh, the negotiations between the applicant and the township and MTO. So I'm, I'm fine with the, uh, the, the condition as it's written there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to through myself to you, uh, was it your intent that it would just be to open it to the satisfaction for laneway access, or? Yeah, I was just going to leave it a lot more general, and I was just going to say, you know, the, the, that appropriate access, safe and appropriate access, can be arranged with the township and MTO. But uh, I'm I'm fine with the way it says there. I mean, this okay. isn't a legal document necessarily; it's just a condition. So I'm right. good with it. And the agreement would come back to the um, township. All right. So what I will ask then is if any of the committee members have any further requirement for discussion. I will request that we have a mover and seconder to grant, refuse, or defer the application. I'll move that we grant. Thank you, Brian. Seconder.
I don't see Jim on the screen or hear Martin. Perhaps, Alicia, you could stop oh, sharing I your screen. Sorry, yeah, uh, Councillor Ferguson does have his hand up, but I'll stop sharing. It's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Martin here. I said I'd second it. I messed up. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Is there any need for any further discussion? Are there any opposed to granting the application with the additional clause as shown previously? Seeing no hands, the decision of the committee is to grant the application with the conditions as set forth. The applicant will have two years in which to meet the conditions. Um, the notice of decisions will be signed electronically by members present. The committee decisions may be appealed pursuant to section 17D of the Planning Act within 20 days of the date of the notice to the Ontario Land Tribunal. I will now ask for a motion to adjourn. Monica, would you like to get in there? Okay, Monica and Jim. At 10.01, thank you all for your time. And Brian, it sounds like you have a little bit of a cold, so we hope that you get better soon. Cough, cough, yes.